Right, she's all clamped on, ready to go. Got the mobile easel today. Got to walk into this one. Nice water shot, nice water hole. Fantastic. Should be great location, can't wait. Fantastic stuff here, it's beautiful country. Incredibly rocky and arid, but at the same time some nice water. So it's gonna be fantastic, let's get into it. All right, g'day, Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Here we are, beautiful waterhole in the outback, the Northern Flinders Ranges in South Australia. Fantastic location, right on the edge of the bank here, provided I don't slip in, it'll be great. Got myself all set up, got a bit of block in. Gonna use a few pallet knives and tons of oil paint. Let's see what we can do, okay? Right, we've blocked all that in now. That water's pretty dominant, so let's just mix up a few colors, yellow ochre and burnt sienna. Get the paint on. Get the paint on to start with. And try to establish where all my, go for a bit of ultramarine blue there as well, magenta. <laughs> stick a few darks in, might stick some of the darkest darks while I'm at it now with a alizarin crimson and some viridian green makes a really good dark. Just put some darks in to get things started. The water's a real dark colour itself, but it has got a bit of a, it is still lighter than the banks. It's lighter than the banks are, so. I'm just going to get a general feel. I'm painting the shadow, painting the shadow tones first with yellow ochre and burnt sienna mainly, but sticking a bit of blue in here and there and that helps darken it. Just getting a bit of a coverage at the moment. Some really steep, chunky hills up there. What a lovely day today down here. What a lovely day. Okay, so we've got a bit of an idea there. Bit of an idea there. And I'm just going to get a bit of white with some of that ultramarine. The water's just got a slightly frosted look. I'm putting that white with those darker tones. We'll just frost it off a bit, I would imagine. Okay. Bit of burnt sienna there in yellow ochre. Let's get that all blocked in, some paint.
Yeah, the wind comes and goes, it's really died back at the moment. Which is great. We just get that in. Just trying to get rid of the white canvas. It's okay to have a bit, but I just don't want too much dominating the picture. Now there's some really deep blues in the shallow blues. Well, not the shallow, but the foreground, right in the foreground. Beautiful dark deep blues. So I'll stick a bit of ultramarine in the mix. Lighten her up a little bit. Get all that tea stain as well. Getting a good blend here at the moment, softening. All right, next biggest difference is beautiful bank back there, that beautiful hill. You can't quite see it, we're in the shot. There's a big orange hill behind, just behind the water hole. Yellow ochre, lizard and crimsons. See what we get. A burnt sienna too. Get it in as quickly as we can. Don't really want to muck around too much. The sun will move or whatever else. All right, now, let's grab a bit of paper towel here. Wipe that clean. Bit of ultramarine blue. Tiny bit of yellow ochre. Let's see what happens here. Just mixing up a bit of sky color. Just put a tiny bit of green in that, but now I'll get rid of that. I won't do any more of that green. It's just for the lowest part of the sky. More of a straight blue, looking up into the heavens. And I'll go even slightly darker as I go up. Beautiful dark, deep blue. Classic Australian sky. <laughs> Pull those two colours together a bit. Too bad now. There's a bit of greenery as well, so a bit of yellow ochre in that sky colour will make something like a like a gum tree green. A few greens here and there. What a lovely day down here. A bit more yellow ochre. Only a bit of magenta too. Some of these bits of foliage are a very pale, 
and a grey look as well, grey green. Particularly the salt bushes and stuff on the hills, well not salt bushes but the arid sort of bushes. So I'll just lightly put them in. Just subtly changing the colour variance. Let's look at that one. Well, this giving me a vague idea of what's going on there. Don't see any yellow ochre and white. Sienna, yellow ochre and white again. Just gonna pick out some of the shapes of the hills now. Make a bit of a magentary blue kind of greyish colour over there. I can mix with the uh, lovely ochre colours and that'll give me the variety the colour of the bank, the cliffs, like some of, the, some of it's got a slight ochre tinge and some's got a slight dusty mauve tinge slightly deeper tone in the reflection You know, a gust of wind on the way. You can hear it up in the hills just whistling around. Stand back for a minute, look what I've got. Starting to get there, starting to get there. Wind's really come in for a minute. Just pulling, right, what's the edge of that? Pick out some draftsmanship with this clumsy big knife. Bit of a yellow ochre high tide mark here, which is good. I'll stick that in. Things are changing a bit. The light is going over the top. I was standing in the sun a second ago, but soften some of the edges of that. Wiping the knife clean each time.
I'm a what? Subtle shadow tones all through this area. Cracks in the rocks. All the stuff that you get. An off on edge, just drawing a few branches in this tree back here. Pick it out. Oop. Well, we got a lighter tone here up on the up on the distant cliff. Quite that light though. A bit more purple in the mix. It's up on the rocky crags up there. All right, well, it's pretty hard to see through that camera. Anyway, that's pretty much the basic thing. We've got it all now. Pretty much got the overriding colors and tones of what I was looking for. All right, let's get the camera off and take a closer look. No worries. All right, so I really enjoyed this scene. Uh, one thing, the sun up behind the cliffs where I was painting I started off, I was standing in sunlight and then I ended up in shadow, which made it hard to do the camera work because it all changed halfway. But as far as seeing the painting, I could see it myself and uh, get all those subtle colours in. So the cliff itself, I really pulled out the subtle mauves and the ochres, which I could see in real life. It's always harder to pick it up through the camera if you're just filming it. But when you're standing there in front of nature, those subtle colour changes become very obvious, which is the benefit of being out there plain air. Now you can see all the slide technique I use with the palette knife, and uh, you can see the water itself is also subtle palette knife marks. You'll see the way I've pulled all the colours through to give that reflective quality of the water. All right, well, there you go. I'm pretty happy with it. Got pretty much what I was after. Uh, beautiful lighting conditions down at the waterhole. Now, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell and also give the thumbs up and spread the video around as much as you can. All right, thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.